and awe. You're listening to Interverse Podcast. My name is Chance. I'm joined by my wife and co-host Haley today to talk to Brady Cagle, also known as Flintwick. Brady is an all-around musical genius. I'm not hesitant to say that at all. He's got so many talents, it's hard to actually describe them all. And I'll save it for the episode, but just suffice to say, he can pretty much do anything when it comes to music. I've seen it. It's beautiful. And he is a true spark of genius. His spirit is literally designed for making music. It's kind of freaky to watch, but it's so fun and funky that it's not that freaky. It's a little freaky though. Sometimes I get spooked out by it. His music is that good. So um, we're gonna get onto that episode and talk to him pretty soon. First, there's a few things I wanna talk to you guys about. And then we will be also checking out music by Brady in between the segments here. So let's turn it up. given us this preview of what he's been working on and really the question that comes to mind is how has someone at the tender young age of 20 managing to have such mastery over a craft like producing electronic music i know people that have worked on it for a long time that you know it took them years to get to the level that brady is already showing with uh what he's doing here it's just so fucking amazing and creative so how is that possible well We talked about this in the episode, so I I won't go into it in too much detail, but basically the answer is you gotta show up every day. If you show up every day to whatever it is that you're working on and put in some time, even if it's only a little bit here and there, if that's how it has to be, you'll have momentum. And the muse doesn't come to those who aren't actually there working. You know, like, what's the muse gonna do wasting its time giving inspiration to somebody who's watching TV? That's not gonna happen. They're gonna give inspiration to the person that's sitting at their computer working on their music or sitting at their easel and painting or standing, I guess you don't have to sit, or working on um, writing a book or there's so many things that the muse can come to you for if you're actually there in the moment. And that's also uh, brings me to my next point. If, If you don't have something like that that's building up daily momentum in your life and taking you towards a higher level of mastery, Why don't you look at your life as that which you're creating, the thing that you're putting work into, not just your life like going to a job or, you know, like keeping yourself alive. I'm talking about making the changes that are necessary to optimize your experience. And those type of things require daily steps in the right direction. Um, So one step that I just recently took, and that's why I'm even talking about this, I, I got a new shower head and it seems like a small thing, but I'd like to encourage you guys to consider doing the same thing. This shower head that I got, let me look at what it's called here. 
It is a uh, Sprite HO2-WH-M universal shower filter and three setting shower head. Only $30 on Amazon. I'm going to link to that in the episode description. And it's it's uh, $20 off from its normal price of 50. The reason why getting a shower head like this would count as optimizing your life or improving yourself would be because it's going to filter out chlorine, pharmaceuticals, bacteria, all kinds of stuff that's hard on your body. And whenever you, whenever you take a shower, you're actually taking in a great deal of chlorine because it vaporizes from the hot water and you're actually inhaling it and it's going into your skin pores because they're opened up because of the heat. All in all, it's just not a good idea to take a hot shower with city water. But almost all of us are doing that, except those of us that are lucky enough to be like out on a well or something or to have some sort of advanced filtration going on in their home. So anyway, I'm just bringing this up in case any of you have thought about purifying your water situation beyond just what you're drinking. Of course, I'm not drinking city water, but I've been taking showers in it for a while, I guess like several years. And there's fluoride in that, there's chlorine, there's, like I said, pharmaceuticals. So it just seems like a really easy choice to spend $30 and get something that I won't have to replace the filter for about a year. Although I might replace it earlier than that just to play it safe. Anyway, I'll let you know how it goes installing that. And like I said, I've linked to it in the episode description. Just in case any of you out there are thinking, hey, that's a good idea and that's a good deal. And I'd like to take in less toxic chemicals to my body. And there you go. That's one step for your day towards uh, manifesting a better self or a better you. Creating the life that is best for you, that you want. And uh, so anyway, let's listen to a little bit more Brady's music here. I swear I can't get enough of his music. I've been listening to it nonstop. Wow, such crazy energy in that music. Okay, so one more thing before we start this conversation with Brady. I've got to ask you guys for help. Interverse can only grow one way, and that's with listener support. Well, I guess it grows based on how much time I spend working on it and all that, but I, I literally need your help with like funding for equipment, for I need a new computer, super bad. Although, I think you might remember me in a previous episode whining about how my sound card was broken and all that. No, I fixed it. It's good. My computer's running better than ever, guys, and even though it's like a three-year-old laptop. But still, I would be able to make some really cool shit if I had a, a better computer, especially when it comes to graphics and video. And uh, I would definitely put it to good use making artwork and making this podcast better. And I probably wouldn't get a computer first now that I've got my laptop in better working order. I know that I need more audio equipment, though, to uh, make sure that this podcast sounds better and better every episode. I know sometimes it actually sounds a little worse than the previous episode because I make serious fuck ups here and there. But hey, I'm learning this as I go. It is fun and I recommend you start a podcast too. I don't know what yours should be about though, only you know that. Anyway, 
please support me on Patreon. That's what I was meaning to ask. I've got links in the episode description to patreon.com forward slash interverse where you can donate to the show, get rewards, and all in all, gain like 10 trillion good karma points because the universe wants you to donate the podcast and you will get good karma. Actually, I can't promise that, but you will make me happy and I will maybe give you some cool shit depending on what you sign up for or maybe not. Who knows? You guys are great. Your listening is support enough. And if you want to support in a free way, just tell somebody that you think would like the show about it and be like, hey, I know this podcast where they talk about everything random and there's really no point. It's great. And I'll appreciate your help. Let's move on to the talk with Brady. Make sure you stick around at the end and hear the last song called Whiskers that I'm going to play. Like I said, it's exclusive. He hasn't released this yet anywhere. And make sure you also go follow him on SoundCloud or YouTubes or whatever. Just like him on Facebook. Make sure you're paying attention to this kid because he is a fucking brilliant mastermind and you're going to enjoy whatever it is he's getting up to. Whether it's his band or his produced music or his solo live looping shit, it's all good. So... Here we go. Let's talk to Brady. Hakuna Matata and shit, I love you all. Thanks for listening. I hope you have a good time. Welcome to the show, our good friend Brady Cagle, also known as Flintwick on SoundCloud and I guess YouTube and the internet at large. <laughs> and also oh, uh, welcome Haley for co-hosting today. Hey everybody, I'm back. So uh, what's up Brady? Not much man, I'm just enjoying Springfield while I'm here. So uh, I appreciate you having me on. Where are you from originally? Well I'm from Fort Smith, Arkansas originally and then about two years ago I moved to Little Rock. Just for the hell of it, my friend, you know, had a place open and a job, and he's like, hey, you know, you can come move down here if you want and work on your music and stuff. So that's pretty much where I've been so far, just expanding the fan base from Central and beyond. <laughs> when did you uh, start your musical journey? What point in your life would that have been? Probably around, was it eighth or ninth? Yeah, ninth grade, I picked up mandolin, uh, a little folky instrument. Uh, eight strings and uh, I listen to a lot of bluegrass and Grateful Dead all that good stuff and yeah from there I just like wanted to learn a lot of bluegrass songs and I was listening to Grateful Dead heavily and then I found out like hey there's this Grateful Dead tribute festival uh, here in Arkansas you know Brady you should come and I had just gotten my car I just turned 16 I was like well hell yeah I'm, I'm going I didn't have any other friends that listened to Grateful Dead or anything like, I wasn't even really, like, a little hippie kid or anything. Yeah, you know, I just genuinely loved the music. And so I got there, and uh, I start walking around with my mandolin, and turns out hippies love, like, bluegrass, and I fit, like, right in perfectly. And I was like, wow, I did not know it would be that easy. <laughs> These are my people. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. Like, I expected, oh, yeah, they like Grateful Dead and Fish and, like, jam bands and stuff, but... Turns out bluegrass is just as prevalent in music festivals. Yeah, um, there's a really good one in Arkansas, Hillberry, that's got... Yeah, oh yeah, Hillberry's great. All, kinds all the of good berries stuff. are great, ultimately. Yeah, that <laughs> Productions kills it in the festival game. Yeah, Highberry's about to happen. Yeah, dude, I really wish I could make it. I uh, have a lot going on, so I don't think I'll be able to, but I've been going the past four years. I think it's been four years now since it became open to the public. And it started at Birdfest... Or, I'm sorry, the Birds Campground. Down in Mulberry Mountain area. Yeah. And it was great. I believe the first year it was just like an old Grateful Dead tribute band, Terrapin Flyer. 
and uh, they always have like somebody from that originally played with the Dead or Jerry Garcia band sit in with them. And that was the the keyboardist Tom Constantin. I'm pretty sure that was the first year. And yeah, so it's de- it's decently small. And the next year I see Keller on the lineup, Keller Williams. You know, he does the the live looping, uh, folky stuff. That was actually what I was about to ask you about next because. When I became familiar with you or music yeah. before I actually knew you, it was seeing you perform with a live looping type setup with a, a ton of different instruments and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. so what transitioned you from mandolin to full fledged um, multi instrumentalist? Well, in short, it would be uh, not having anybody to jam with. <laughs> so, like, I was learning mandolin and all these. I had one or two buddies. Um, my buddy Evan and Mason, they uh, picked up guitar and banjo around whenever I started picking up mandolin, so we jammed together a lot, but, you know, there was so much more I wanted to do with, like, drums and keys and synth and stuff, and uh, I wasn't really, like, big in electronic music, and I was whenever I was in around, like, seventh grade. Well, shoot, maybe that could have been when my musical journey started. I didn't, I didn't think about that, but a couple of years before I picked up mandolin, Oh, yeah, we should tell them how old you are. Oh, I'm 20. Yeah, so yeah. seventh grade, that's barely any time ago for someone like me. <laughs> yeah, it was like, uh, what is it, like 10, 11, 12, like six, five or six years ago? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, so something like that. electronic music was definitely exploding at that time. Yeah, so that was when Skrillex and Dubstep was was the big thing, and... Uh, now, not like not like the UK like old school wobbly dubstep. It was the bro step, you know, just the big screechy, <laughs> which was awesome. You know, like the Whittler. Um, well, he isn't as screechy, but you know, Whittler, Skrillex. I want to say Nero. I think he did a little low dubstep stuff. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, definitely around back then. Yeah. But then you went the other way with mandolin and then just started learning right. all kinds of instruments. Yeah. Well, see, I was, uh, I was maybe it was honestly like six, sixth or seventh grade was whenever I started getting the dubstep thing and I wanted to produce music, not knowing anything about music theory or any instruments. So I downloaded Fruity Loops FL Studio, which is a di- digital audio workplace where, you know, you put in your drum beats and their synths and everything. And it got me like the basis of, I guess had the way music is arranged and electronic music and stuff. And then I gave that up for a couple of years. Yeah, you know, wasn't really getting too far with it. And then picked up mandolin. And at that point, I didn't care about electronic music at all. <laughs> and made this whole like 180 within those few years of, uh, you know, playing mandolin and picking up other instruments and learning music theory where I really wanted to produce electronic music. But uh, I also didn't want to be one of those DJs on stage just twisting knobs, not doing anything, just clicking a button, which which now I am. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I wanted to play all the instruments. And so that's what got me into live looping is, A, not really having anybody to jam with, and B, you know, I wanted to make that electronic music, get people grooving, but actually, like, prove, hey, look, I'm doing stuff. So, you know, I'll put in my drum beat on the pad, on the MPC sampler, and uh, it all goes into my big boss uh, loop station. And, you know, like that, the loop, the loop, uh, the loop station itself has been through many changes. Like, my first drum machine was some, like, vintage, cheap little Alesis drum machine that I uh, put the beats in and sound real janky and, like, 80s esque. And uh, just a micro Korg synthesizer and my electric mandolin. But since then, it's grown through a couple more synthesizers, better drum pads and samplers, and effects processors and stuff. And uh, so I started touring, well, not touring, but you know, playing shows around Arkansas and Missouri as Brady Cagle, you know my name, uh, for the live looping. And yeah, I've been doing that for a couple of years and getting the fan base growing. Then I switched to. Well, didn't switch, but I started producing and DJing electronic music and expanding my, my projects now that I actually, A, had the, the good production um, software I needed, and B, had people to jam with now. so. Oh, yeah, you have a band now, right? Yeah, right, yeah. I'm, now I'm with uh, Deep Sequence. It's a progressive funk fusion band that I got going in Little Rock, uh, four-piece, so... 
so yeah, so I have, so I, I haven't been live looping recently to, to say in short, um, yeah, just got so much going on between producing and DJing and actually jamming on the keys and stuff and play keyboard in the funk band. But yeah. Uh, do you have any recorded stuff from that band right now? No, I do not. We have videos of like li or live feeds and stuff on Facebook, but we're actually currently in the studio making a demo or working on it at least. That way we can book shows around the area and stuff. And yeah, I'm really proud of that. I can't wait to show it to people. So you're kind of interested in doing, kind of just doing it all, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Why, why focus on just one thing? Yeah. And you know that you can shoot yourself in the foot doing that as well, because you know you can't. Or what is it? What's that saying? Um, you can only have one master, or I don't know. It's basically, if you try to do a little bit of everything, you know you're not going to be too great at one thing in particular. But that's bad news for me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> explains my life. <laughs> but you know, I don't think that's always the case necessarily but and i think going in multiple directions can cause synergies later down the road like mm -hmm. you might feel that the things you're into are not convergent but they might reconverge later for you right i don't know it's kind of a balanced thing because on the flip side of i i think i know what saying you're talking about i don't know what it is but there's the other saying don't put all your eggs in one basket so it's like yeah the balance yeah. between obsessing over one thing and and not allowing yourself to see any windows that open um, in other areas of your life and then kind of spreading your uh, energy out amongst a couple of your interests too. So it's probably like somewhere in the middle, I yeah, guess. Right. Yeah, let's strike that balance. Yeah, that's actually what we were talking about when we were listening to some of the new music you're working on. Um, one of the things about it that I find to be really mature about your production style is your light dark balance or like silence and uh, noise um, right, right. hard hard and squishy yeah <laughs> hard and say squishy. Soft, but like no it's more like squishy, squishy yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes it crunches a little yeah when you squeaky. crunch it squeaky <laughs> yeah it's really organic sounds though um right. you were telling us a little bit about your process and how you're moving away from even sampling stuff and uh yeah. just making your own sounds completely but i'll actually say that i kind of enjoy really clever use of sampling don't you Haley? oh yeah i think yeah, uh, absolutely that's another balanced thing like your own sounds sound great mm -hmm. um but using using sort of some of both i think gives so much of yeah, more absolutely. freedom now the uh like i still use like all the like the samples of like you know the knocks and shaking and all that and like coins and stuff i don't make those from scratch now the synths is what i meant like the uh like the bass sounds and like the the actual synthesizer sounds i i try to make from scratch mostly i use presets every now and then for inspiration and you know you got to tweak those some way you know but uh yeah no there's there's no way i could go without like finding a sample of a tomato being squished and putting it in my in my song you know because that's you know it's really hard to create textural real organic sounds from scratch now that is that is one way i get some of the the sounds i do like for the most part for like the really squishy and watery things it is like like a tomato being squished like i have like a big old pack just full of like a hundred different sounds of somebody squishing a tomato <laughs> and you can layer that on things and add that like squishy texture and even make bass sounds out of it but uh it definitely wouldn't be as interesting without all of those those like extra samples. Um, but, yeah, it's complex, yeah. but it also respects the aesthetics of um, you know minimalism. I guess you could say mm -hmm. it's not overly simplistic. It's just not overdone. It's yeah, exactly. and that's a, yeah. It's hard for some producers to find a way to get past the phase of just kind of making a wall of sound. Mm -hmm. You know, like. The, the t music is all about time and the structure that exists between the notes uh, and when everything like when people get real crazy with layering they can make some awesome sounds but sometimes a song is just sort of like one continuous wave of and that doesn't mean there's a wrong way to make music either it's just right, um, right, of course. 
I, I like the aesthetics of how you're doing things. It's really great for flow arts. We were just having a staff and poi session out in the hall, in the living room. Mm-hmm. Pulling it down. Yeah, so uh, flow arts is another thing that you're really into. Yeah, yeah, I picked up the dragon staff about a year ago, and uh, you know I never I haven't gotten too like serious with it, but you know a year of having a prop laying around, you know you're gonna practice enough. And uh, I picked up poi recently, but. Describe yeah, the dragon staff for someone who's not familiar with what that's like. Pardon me? Describe uh, dragon staff for anyone not familiar. It's like a, uh, a, a staff, um, like a, a contact staff, familiar with that, but basically a, like a big long staff that a dojo master would be spinning. <laughs> but the dragon staff, what makes that different, has spokes on each end. It could be anywhere from three to five spokes with uh, wicks on the ends for lighting on fire. And uh, yes, yeah, so yeah. you're spinning fire around your body. Yeah, and <laughs> and a con a contact staff um, is some people when they think of staff they think of spinning it really rapidly and throwing it up in the air and that is one type but a contact staff you more focus on rolling over parts of your body right. it doesn't it kind of stick sticks to your body the whole time you're flowing with it so that's how dragon staff is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you keep the dragon staff continuously ro- rolling. That's like the the big thing, the big guideline of Dragon Staff, just keep it rolling. Any way to do that smoothly, then you know how to spin Dragon Staff, I guess. <laughs> this yeah. is our first time finally hanging out, and you two were immediately hitting it off on staff stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that's, a, that's one thing about the flow arts I really enjoy is, I don't know, like hoopers, boy spinners, everybody. Like, as soon as you see somebody like doing that, it's like, hey, what's up? You want to play? <laughs> like, what's going on? Let's talk about this. Teach me your stuff, I'll teach you mine. I just really love like the teaching and learning aspect of flow arts because, I don't know, there's so much to it. It's just like music, you know? It's, a, it's interesting. It feels like, from going to music festivals for a few years, it feels like the more people get into a certain type of flow art, the, like, the better everyone gets at it. Mm-hmm. It's like the, uh, <laughs> the species is co-evolving on those things. It's like a it's like a wavelength that you tap into for a flow art like that. Like poi, for example, that's where you spin um, a weighted ball. If you've ever seen people sp- like uh, spinning buzz uh, like lights <laughs> at a show sometime. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the other thing you're into, right? But you're doing contact poi, so it's like off the body stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I picked up poi a couple months ago, just off and on. Um, I want to eventually get to where I can do like badass fire tricks with like contact stuff, like rolling it across the arms and stuff. That's a that's definitely my focus with flow arts. It seems is what I gravitate to is the the contact rolling across the body. And uh, do you think it helps you understand music more to do flow arts? Does it tie well, into um, your your creative flows as well? Well, it, de- it definitely ties into my creativity, absolutely. But uh, I mean, in, in the sense that, like, you know, if I can't flow to a song correctly, then there's maybe something wrong with it. But then again, I also like to get, like, take the, the conventional rhythms and aspects of music and kind of twist them and make them a little more difficult to dance to or flow to in some parts, but still bring it back around. And uh, what's interesting about that is... I, what you're describing by difficult, I would say, is uh, you challenge expectations with a lot of this musical structure that you create, mm-hmm. which is part of what makes it super interesting. But what I've experienced when I'm at a show and I'm uh, hearing something that's like definitely challenging to expectations, and I, I'm I'm getting into the flow with either my levitation wand or just you know getting down dancing. Um, it's almost like you get into this psychic space where you know how to move to the music, even though you may not have even ever heard that song before. Right. And so that is uh, like the interestingness of the music, the, the soul that's in the music definitely has an impact on whether how easy you can get into that type of space when dancing to it. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting because you, you're challenging expectations to the, if you're just listening actively with the left brain, but if you get into it with your like intuitive side, by moving with it, then um, you fu- there's like a weird logic to the the songs you're making. It's not yeah. actually like just random. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was, I was actually about to say maybe I felt the opposite when listening to his music a little bit because in a lot of ta- a lot of times, especially when you're dancing, it's like um, you basically know what's coming next. Yeah, right. And you're just following that, that, right, that rhythm. That right. Out. And so whenever it's um, more unpredictable, it's uh, it's almost like you are intently listening, like you're um, you're what's the word? Anticipate? Um, not anticipating. Like you're excited for what's next. You're, um, <laughs> yeah, you're looking forward to hearing it, but you're not exactly sure what's coming. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Intrigued, for intrigued. sure. Intrigued. <laughs> Thank you. That's the word. You're intrigued. Yeah. It's well, good. Inspired. Yeah. Your music is pretty inspired. Uh, I, I definitely will have, by this point, played a few of the songs at the beginning of the episode. So, sweet. sweet. Yeah. People check the episode links. Go follow. Flintwick on SoundCloud. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Make sure that you pay attention to what Brady puts out in the future because, you know, man, for 20 years old, you're you're really hitting some stride with your, like, you're just, you're living the dream, man. You're doing all the cool stuff right now. Yeah, uh, for any uh, age. <laughs> that's why I wanted to have you on here because I feel like anybody that has their priorities that straight, which is just like, be happy, make cool shit. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's... Man, be happy and make cool shit. I yeah, like we all need to be on your level. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of lot of uh, work that goes into it, and once you make that, like, look at it like the way I look at it is, I didn't go to college, so basically, it's like spend these years as if you you know it's building up for your career, and then once you reach a certain point. It's like, all right, this is my career now. In college, you know, you're constantly working, and then by the end of it, you know, you have your degree, and then you can start your career. And I feel like I'm in the point where it's like, you know, you build it, going to class, building followers, and, you know, I feel like eventually I'll hit that point where, um, you know, I'm not going to stop trying to better myself and go to class, per se, but... um, I'm going to feel like, you know, this is my career now. Now I can quit, you know, selling sushi <laughs> in, in Little Rock and actually tour and got my degree. <laughs> yeah, so you're... And going on tour is, is, is the cutoff for me where it's like, all right, you have your degree. Don't quit going to class, but... <laughs> I, uh, I'm sure you're not... You're probably really not far from that. All it takes is a, a little bit of booking and you got yeah, yourself and that's what I'm, I'm not too great at you know <laughs> well uh, you know you can't focus on that too much because like to an extent you have to put yourself out there but um being just being in your creative flow constantly and taking the opportunities that are wise to take as they come will always lead you to the next opportunities and it'll it, just like a class curriculum would have like one assignment to the next <laughs> mm-hmm. Like you have, right. maybe you only have one show scheduled. Well, that's your next homework assignment. Yep. And then exactly. you'll get your next one after that class. <laughs> that's a good metaphor, actually. Anybody out there that has something that they like, you know, wish that they were doing as a career, that the best advice is to just start treating it like it already is, mm-hmm. and put as much of yourself into it as you can. Yeah, definitely apply. I think um, that's why a lot of people never really do what they actually want because they don't ever actually apply themselves to it, which right. different reasons. It might be because they're afraid of failing. It might be just because they have trouble with that self-motivation. Um, but if you never try, it's never going to happen. Yeah, exactly. And if you And if you're really just disappointed in yourself because you haven't reached some Um, idealized destination in whatever your imaginary career is it will always be hard to have the self-motivation it's really about Mm -hmm. becoming happy being in the flow of the thing itself and then it doesn't really matter what part of the stream you're at whether it's like downstream where you've developed this really far or you're near the beginning where you're just learning a lot it's the same process applies the whole way through Mm -hmm. (laughs) you're you're just taking in information processing and putting out information in the form of whatever it is that you want to make and whatever it is that you're, you know, going more deeply into. It could be anything. Maybe it's like uh, you really like to sew people underpants and so <laughs> you really only sew it for your family and friends, but now you're thinking maybe you could, you could start a business here. Yeah, maybe sew underpants for dogs or something. 
<laughs> really, so you have the whole internet to work with. You only need to have like a hundred thousand followers to support yourself with something if there are people that are actually interested in supporting you for what you're doing. And there's they're out there. That's like yeah. such a small fraction of humanity. I think we're moving into an age where everybody can actually independently support themselves doing their own thing because yeah, absolutely. We can actually connect to each other properly and it's just applying yourself and yeah, you know, throw yourself in pretty much, little by little. You'll get there for most things, that is. And if, like, you're worried that the robots are going to take your job over, just become a musician. That's what everyone <laughs> should do once the robots are doing all the menial labor. So what kind of stuff do you do to, like, keep yourself in balance uh, other than staying creative? Like, do you have any, you know, other interests? Do you been reading anything, meditation, any kind of like yoga or anything? Well, uh, those were the basics. You could be, you could have anything. Uh, well, I think routines yeah. are a big, a big thing. You know, I like to, I wake up early, um, usually take a shower and drink a couple pots of coffee. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I don't smoke, smoke or anything until, um, uh, you know, usually my, my most creative for working on the track is in the morning time. After a cup of coffee, um, nothing to eat really, just stretches, coffee, and then I'm in. Um, after a couple hours, once I reach this point in the song or, or you know, whatever I'm working on, I, uh, you know, want to chill, change my headspace a little bit, you know, lay back and relax and listen, listen or look at or whatever I had been doing to, to occupy my time, whether it is like, you know, painting or poi or something, you know, lay back and enjoy the progress that I made. And it's like I reached that checkpoint and I don't know, it's all about workflow with bettering yourself. You know, there's so many factors that slow you down. And once you get rid of those and get it all organized, you can just flow through it, which, you know, with my music production, that's that you know that's one thing that I feel like I'm really bad at, but also really good at is staying organized. Because you know you look at one of my project files, and it, every, there's clutter everywhere, and nothing's labeled. Like all the bases are scattered out, and you don't know which one's which, so I have to click through them all. And uh, there's that aspect of it which makes it completely unorganized. But it's how you spend your time. Uh, like when you actually are producing because I look at it in like two separate ways um, actually arranging tracks and building a track entirely like you know putting in all the all the all the basses and and drums and everything that's A and that's whenever I'm, I'm most creative I work on that whenever I'm not feeling motivated or creative I work on the minuscule things that make it easier for whenever I am creative, like just playing around on the computer, like making random sounds, not working on a track, not focusing on my art. Like think of it like painting, like you really feel like painting and you go into your art room and you just see your big old portrait that you've been working on. And you're just like, ah, you know, I just, I don't really know what to add here. I'm not feeling it, but it's just like, I want to paint. So normally you just put down the paintbrush and go find something else. But my idea is there's the arranging, the painting it, and then there's also the whole practice part. So rather than putting down the paintbrush and doing something, like you don't even have to start a new project, but you know, go over to another canvas and maybe work on just making waves or something. I don't know, it depends what you're painting or, or music you're making, but you just doodle basically. Like I deal with my music and my whenever I'm not feeling motivated because it makes you better for whenever you are motivated and you're in the zone. That way you can just go through and blow through it because one thing that will really mess you up with a painting or a composition is spending too much time on all the little things while you're really in the, the mood. So you're over here like, I don't know, like you're arranging something, you hear a cool sound and like kind of want to expand on that sound or maybe just experiment with it for a bit and then you'll get lost in like an hour just like for like an hour like doing something else within the track that uh, 
you know, could have been spent, uh, I don't know. Yeah, you'll end up getting tired of a track before it's like halfway done because you've spent so much time on like all the small things where that should just be a complete other area of production. That makes a lot of sense. I'm sure that would apply to a ton of different things. Like yeah, probably absolutely. video editing too. Yeah, I think that's um, kind of like how he used painting as a, um, a comparison. Pretty much any art style or expression is, I would say that's applicable to any yeah. expression. Cooking. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you, you don't feel like cooking a meal and make some oils. Like work on your, I don't know, I, have, I, I, I don't know, chop up some herbs and put them in some olive oil or something. I don't know, get, get it prepared for whenever you do feel like cooking, you know, when you have that inspiration. That way it's easier and you don't have to spend time cutting chives for 30 minutes. I don't know. It's, it, it can be applied to so many different things. Yeah. yeah um, a well-prepared human is a successful human. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But that's a, yeah, that's also a momentum thing that you're describing. Just right. like keeping up a momentum flow. It's like... Mm. Man, those were those are some wise words of advice. That was like worth recording a podcast just for that. <laughs> yeah, <I'm glad. laughs> yeah. So, uh, since you live out in beautiful Arkansas, does that mean you get out to nature quite a bit? Yeah. Well, see, I uh, whenever the weather weather is like really nice, see, Arkansas is like constantly shifting, and it's either way too muggy or too too damn hot to do anything, or not unlike here in Missouri. Or uh, really, yeah. Or just way too rainy, but yeah, I do go out and you know I like flowing outside a lot, but I also find myself stuck inside too much because that's one thing about being a at home electronic music producer at least is I spend so much time just staring at a screen. It's like playing, you know, it's like somebody that wants to play video games all day and just chill inside, but. You know, I'm actually progressing a little bit. I'm working on stuff, but yeah, so I'll end up wasting an entire day just sitting on the computer, not thinking about going outside, not thinking about food or really anything. Just like, I just like waste so much time doing that. So I have to like force myself to, to stop and go out and do something. And, uh, yeah, cause just cause you're in the mood really, really good. And you're like, I could just keep going and keep going once mm-hmm. you hit a certain point and you're out of balance with other things that your body and yourself needs. That's what then flips you over into the state of, oh, I'm not very motivated right now, right. which, but you, if you do fall in that state, you've got a strategy, which is just organize shit at, or mm-hmm. just, uh, fuck around. <laughs> yeah. Cause you do have to dedicate time to just fucking around in life. You absolutely have to. Cause whenever you're like in the middle of your, your project and you start fucking around in the middle, you lose interest as a, in the whole, like as a whole. Like eventually, not necessarily like always, but you know, that's happened to me with painting and drawing before for exactly. sure. Exactly. Mm-hmm. What? Well, yeah. <laughs> Applies to so many things. Uh, well, yeah. So you, you, uh, you do get outside a little bit. Yeah. Um, I like crystal digging a lot. Uh, we're really close to hot springs, Arkansas, where quartz crystals are quite abundant. And, uh, me and my buddy Jake will go out there and come back with buckets full <laughs> Beautiful quartz, but uh, yeah, can go like every now and then. But Little Rock isn't the the prettiest, I guess, of Arkansas. Um, Mulberry being being my favorite, of course. Yeah, the uh, the good old Ozark Mountains, mm-hmm. famous. And the, you know, going to festivals so often is just like forces you to be out in that nature. Forces you to put down the computer for once. That was what I wanted to ask you about also was a little bit more about how getting into like the music scene itself and that community mm-hmm. influenced you towards, um, like did that influence you towards actually wanting to be a performer or were you already kind of thinking you wanted to go that way or did it just boost you? Yeah, I, I think I always, in the back of my head, kind of wanted to be a performer. Now I've always, growing up my whole life, I've been quite introverted and uh, never crossed my mind to be on a stage in front of people and have things rely on me and, I don't know, get embarrassed so easily. But eventually, after I got, like, my confidence of live looping, like, I liked the sounds I was making, so, you know, 
surely somebody else would have that same mindset as me. It's like when they listen to it, they got the same pleasure. So I, uh, yeah, in the, in the beginning, I probably wasn't too destined, destined to perform, but after going to shows and I've, I've always been a dancer. I always love getting up in the crowd and dancing real hard, uh, really show appreciation for the music, feel the music. And, you know, that joy, that paradise that you get in, in the dance floor where you're just surrounded by sound. You don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to think about anything. You just flow and dance and watch the performance and enjoy it for what it is. And being in that position so many times and moving and dancing so much, it just made me think, like, gosh, looking up at them on stage, like, they are forcing people to make their booty shake. Like they're, they're making booty shake by making music. And I was so down for that. And it's like, wow, I, uh, it's really powerful. And I like that a lot, that aspect. So yeah, it's like, um, you're like a wizard up there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You've done you. it to me before. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. A wizard. Back at, you performed at altar festival and that was my first time seeing your Flintwick set. And I hadn't, I didn't even have the knowledge that you were Flintwick. <laughs> Really? Yeah. yeah that's sweet. I was like, oh shit, that's Brady. Because like, I, in my mind, you were just doing the uh, looping stuff. I, yeah. I didn't know how much game you had with the uh, the producing, and I had no idea you had the influences that you did electronically. Like, mm-hmm. some, who are some of your influences? Uh, well, number one, I'd say Zubler and Canty Experience. Their uh, their sound design, is, well, and Canty's sound design is out of this world. It's beautiful masterpiece. And, uh, of course, their visuals are also just insane. If you haven't seen them, please, Chance, please see Zebler and Candy Experience. It's mind-blowing. Um, but besides that, that they were my uh, big, like, trap, twerk, uh, psychedelic bass influences. Um, but as far as, like, down-tempo stuff, Emancipator, uh, Aether, or, or ether, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's A E T H E R. I think it's ether. I'm yeah, sure. it's ether. He's a uh, very, very influ- influential to my down tempo stuff. Very textural. That uh, definitely one of the first that I heard use all those like textures and organic sounds that like really influenced me. Um, and Emancipator has like a good variety of instruments, right? Yeah, super chill acoustic stuff and violin as well. I really like the violin in it. Um, and the floozies. So if I was to, to describe my like my sound to somebody using other artists thrown up in a blender, it'd be <laughs> I'd like to think it's Zebler and Canty, the floozies, a little bit of ether. <laughs> Sounds weird. And uh, <laughs> uh all that, and then just like all the the music I listened to growing up in my music career, Fish, um, all the jam bands, the Motet, um, Victor Wooten, Les Claypool, all that just kind of thrown into a blender and zoomed up. Also, Mr. Bill. Mr. Bill is a huge influence in my sound design and glitch hoppy, glitchy stuff, and uh, Tipper. Tipper as well. That's yeah. just like, I, I, feel like that. Yeah. I feel like Tipper is just an unspoken thing of, amongst all psychedelic bass producers. It's like, well, yeah, Tipper. <laughs> he does it. He does it real well. Uh, Sixus. Somatost. Somatost is a huge influence as well for the side dub. But yeah, I'd say those are all my top, my top guys. There's somebody here just like, uh, oh, I need new music and just writing down all yeah. the things. Yeah, check just, out all these, all these, uh, these artists and tell me what you think. I think everybody will like them. So, so what's your life future look like? Like what's the direction that you are orienting yourself towards beyond well, with music and beyond? Well, uh, as of recently I've, I've quit live looping for a little bit. Um, so that's, I'm putting that on the back burner for a bit to work on my Flintwick, uh, stuff and my, uh, work with Deep Sequence, my funk band. So I eventually want to get to the point where I'm touring with Deep Sequence and and, and doing my Flintwick thing. I'd like to play Flintwick at a lot of festivals, whereas Deep Sequence, I would 
especially like to just book shows at bars everywhere and just tour around with them. Um, but you know, I really just want to focus on those two for a while because I feel like, uh, yeah, I feel really confident in those two projects a lot. What else about yourself are you developing like towards in the future? Well, beyond, you know, beyond music. Uh, that's your one master right now, huh? Yeah, yeah I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever else is just a part of that. Yeah, I, you know, I love cooking. I love cooking a lot. Um, I've always painted and done art my entire life, as of, but as of the, the past two years, I, I put it down for a while. Just worked on music. Well, that's pretty much my, my main like career life goal, is just like be a badass musician, tour, make people dance inspire um i would i would really like to eventually get my ableton uh which is the the software i use to produce all my music i want to get a certificate or my ableton i think that's what it's called certificate to be able to teach people how to use it um you know i'm not i don't think i'm close to to being able to get my certificate yet but eventually i think that'd be really cool to have so whenever i'm in between playing shows you know do Ableton workshops and classes and do that. Cause I also, I love teaching. I love teaching a lot. Um, whether it's cooking, spinning boy or uh, music, but yeah, that's what, that's pretty much my goal. Just make, make music a career, enjoy life, travel, go out of the States for once. We have to go overseas oh, or yeah. to another country at all. Go to Envision Festival. Zebler builds stages there. Yeah, yeah. I saw a, I saw a Snapchat of a, the stage Zebler, Zebler built. And it was so beautiful, so beautiful. So, what kind of places are you going to travel first? That's difficult. I would really like to go to like France, <laughs> for no 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 particular reason. I just like really want to see that culture. You know. Sounds fancy. That's why. I don't say. I like cheese a lot, so. So does Haley. Love no. Cheese. <laughs> That's not true. Quite the opposite. <laughs> cheese. She's a cheese. Yogurt and <laughs> cream. It's Are you vegan, Haley? No. Oh, no. Does you just don't like cheese? No, I don't like cheese at all. I don't eat. I mean, I don't eat dairy. I'm pretty strict about not eating dairy, but I like, I have always loved the taste of like yogurt and cream cheese, sour cream, all that I've always loved, but I don't, I don't eat it anymore. I haven't for like a couple of years, mm. but I never liked cheese. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a cheese addict. Yeah. I'm definitely going to eat a pizza within a day or two. Yeah. I just, honestly, <laughs> before I came here, I almost ate an entire pizza to myself. I was about to pass out, so I had to get some coffee before I came. <laughs> I was like, well, you, you've uh, done great. Like, you know, sometimes it's not easy to get people to really open up and just talk at length about themselves. And that's a been a cool thing about you, man. You've had a very, very large amount to say, both with your music and um, like in this talk so far. Well, I appreciate it, man. I, uh, it's something I've, I've really worked on in the past few years. It's being able to respond, <laughs> you know, with, with that with more than one or two words. Um, so what's like, here's, here's a good question. What is reality? <laughs> what is reality? Yeah. What is reality? I, I, don't, if I guess everything in, in this physical realm, like what it, that, that I'm a part of, I don't know. That's, that's some deep shit. Yeah. <laughs> why, how's it here and why? What's your, what's the cause of reality to you? Cause of reality. I guess just to, I don't know, experience it, not try to change it. I don't know. I, I, mean, I couldn't. That's, that's deep for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what flow is about then, like uh, getting out of the way of certain things and moving with other things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's what I, I think, you know, keep your momentum going. Not Don't get too, like, don't get stalled one spot for too long. Is that why, uh, are you, are you looking to move soon? Is that true? Uh, no, no, I'm not really, 
I, I have no idea where I would move right now. Little Rock's good to me. Um, yeah, I don't spend too much time in Little Rock one day. <laughs> but, yeah, I travel enough. It's just a good central location. And plus, you know, my funk band is there. So I do plan on staying around them for as long as I can, get that working and going with the flow. Do you have any gigs uh, coming up anywhere? Yeah. Uh, July 8th, I'm actually going to be coming to Springfield playing a show with Cadella and My Own Eyes. Oh, that'll be really good. Oh, yeah. Both of those, I've put their music on the podcast multiple times. Yeah, they're both great musicians, great people, good buddies. That'll be one to see. Do you have anything coming up with your band right now? Yeah, where are we playing? Yeah, we're playing at this, uh, on June 23rd in Little Rock. We're playing at a after party to this, like, overnight festival thing called uh, Optica. Optica Initial. So we're playing the after party at this, at Aphrodisia Studios there. So that'd be cool. Cool. I'll yeah. have links to, I'll link to your pages and links to the upcoming yeah. shows right there. Sweet. Awesome. Yeah, because I know there's some Arkansas fam that listen to this, so they might uh, come check it out. Yeah, I hope so. What up, Arkansas fam? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, Have you ever thought about uh, setting up a Patreon before? A what? A Patreon? I don't know what that is. Oh, wow. Okay, well, I talk about it on here a lot because I've got one. But this is something that I, I think that you might be interested in doing. You can set up a, a deal where... Through this website, Patreon, you're able to have people pledge uh, support to you, and you can, in return, give them access to stuff that wouldn't otherwise be released. Huh. And you can tier it based on how much they pledge. That's what, uh, you, know, you know, give them different things for different levels of support. Mm -hmm. So for a musician, a lot of them use it to let people have access to works in progress that... Um, when they don't get posted anywhere else or be sweet. give them early access to songs that are done or just like behind the scenes studio stuff or ask them do a poll and ask people their opinion and like different, you can set it up however you want. And you could even set it up to be where if you, um, people could pledge to just give you $1 per track when you release a track and then they get to nice. download it. There's a ton of different ways. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. You need to send me a, send me a link to that for sure. Cause okay. Definitely need all the support. <laughs> yeah, I highly For recommend sure. you get uh, that set up. Pardon me? I highly recommend you get that set up because just yeah. like once it's there, um, people will use it if you mm -hmm. talk about it and make it a thing. You know, like you're, you can uh, put a l little bit of energy into that and a lot of energy will sprout out of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, people want to support awesome young dudes like you. Mm -hmm. We'll do it. <laughs> Hit me with all that support, y'all, please. <laughs> I need some. <laughs> we'll share it when you have it set up. Yeah, please. Thank you. Maybe you can make him a, a Patreon video, Haley. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. Sweet. You get a little introductory video that you can post, and it's just kind of like a briefing about who you are and what your Patreon, what they would be supporting by nice. pledging your Patreon. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we could easily, next time you're in town, we could do knock that out in like... A few hours, I'm sure. That'd be sweet. I'd appreciate that a lot. That'd be that'd be very cool. Yeah. Sweet man. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, well, guys, is there anything you guys wanna like uh, say to the people? Well, I appreciate you having me on the show. And appreciate all the listeners, and hope you check out my music and let me know how you like it, and come out to all the shows, show some support. My only message is to definitely check out his music because um, as was featured in the episode, that's not you, you just have to listen to more than just two songs. You have to get, <laughs> you have to get into it a little bit. So go check out the, the uh, SoundCloud for sure, the YouTube, whatever Find his whatever you like best. Bending Phrases is the name of the mix. Just listen to that and you really do want to listen to all of it because there's such a range of stuff that happens throughout mm -hmm. from track to track. It's not like you have, it's great. You're, you're one of those artists that has a unique style, but it's not all the same sounds, not all the same structures at all. It takes mm -hmm. you on a fucking journey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's it's funky as hell. Yeah. Also. <laughs> and that's one thing I really like, like want to translate in my, uh, to my, uh, to my live shows is that, you know, you're so used to DJs just going from drop to drop to drop. But I like to have like those long, 
weird chord sequences in between, you know, and like really change things up. And then like, until like you almost forget that there's going to be like a big old drop at some point and then it actually builds you up a lot better than building up, going down, building up, going down. You can only do that for so long. Yeah. Defying expectations. That's what, right. that's what makes things interesting. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm going to call the episode. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Fine expectations. That's the key to originality in my book. Yeah, but um, it helps to have, like be really well-versed with what you're doing so that you understand what the expectations are, too. Mm-hmm. I agree. Sweet. Well, uh, thanks for coming on the show, Brady. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Huh? Let's go outside and play with Flow Toys. We'll do it. <laughs> All right, see you guys next week. Bye.